Hi everybody, welcome to this an inbox review of the Panzerkampfwagen B2 740F or the B1 BIS by Tamiya in 1 35th scale. Uh, before I go through the inbox I just would like to say thank you to Martin Colmer who sent me this kit. I won it in a, a, a prize draw on his channel so thank you again for sending it. It's a great looking kit and we'll look through it in a moment. But yes, thanks Martin, and I will put a link to his channel down below in the description. There's some great builds on there, some, some great videos, and it's a great channel, so go check it out. So here's the kit. Um, very attractive box art in the, the three-tone German camo here. Um, on the side you get the usual Tamiya type things. There's the box scheme on the front. And you have three more schemes, two other captured schemes and one French scheme and the box art is repeated on the ends as is usual for Tamiya. On the other side we have a completed model and what it can look like. Okay, so that's the box, let's look inside it. Now you get a whole lot of plastic in this kit, so let's look at that first. The first thing is the main hull, it's quite a, a big one. Got some of the sides moulded in it as well. Let's have a look at some of the detail. Um, all the rivets on there and a few doors. Similar sort of detail all over. So that's the main hole. Okay, sprue A, you get two of them. They are identical, so I'll just go through one. Now it's no surprise that you get things such as road wheels in the kit, of course you do. But let's have a look at some of the details on the kit. A little, little mouldings there. If you come along you can see some detail on the bigger wheels, the drive wheels. And some nice shackles and things like that. That's all quite nice. So there's two of those sprue A. Okay, here's sprue B, which has, once again, nice things. A few doors with some lovely detail on. Other parts, some nice details. Um, this, I believe, is part of the exhaust system. It goes on the top. Sides. rivets again. Something basically to take a wash and some dry brushing. So that's sprue B. Sprue C now has a Frenchman in a few parts. But a nicely detailed uniform. Different parts. Once again some nice tools and things. Here's the um, the turret. Shovel. That sort of thing. Uh, sprue B bag also has polycaps in it for moving parts. So that's sprue, oh sorry, sprue C. Sprue D now, uh, more hull parts. Um, so once again, details, rivets, hinges, things like that. More rivets. This tank had a lot of rivets on it. Um, horn to think there, your little horny parts at the front. I'm, I don't know that much about armour. Um, I'm more of an aircraft person. But that's where the, the drive wheels, I think, go. Um, parts for the gun. And the underside of the hull. With a lovely little escape hatch on it there. That's sprue D. And sprue E, which helps you make it into a captured version because here it has a German crewman with the same sort of detail as you got on the Frenchman. Different tools, once again nicely detailed. Ends for a tow cable, which also comes in, in this bag, it's this uh, thread. And just optional parts. So that's all the plastic. 
So in addition to the plastic, you also get this. Um, the individual tracks. They're clipped together and just many, many parts all the same. So they're just clipped together. I think it's 61 or 63, something like that, per side. And also in the back, you get a chain to hang on the back, which we'll see where that goes in the instructions. The transfers, as usual, quite minimal on an armor kit. We have various German crosses and numbering, French flag and allied stars. For when it is a, a French version, they should be fine, they're nice and thin. Although I have never used Tamiya transfers. Okay, let's have a look at the instructions then. So, as usual for Tamiya, uh, box art repeated in black and white and information on the tank itself the real thing. Let's open it up. So we get the usual one from Tamiya. Uh, warnings and what you require, tools and things. And then onto the first part of the assembly, which is the road wheels. No glue, so they should roll and work uh, correctly. That's step one. Step two, placing the road wheels into the hull. So all straightforward so far. Then step three, the larger wheels, front and back, and then adding them into parts of the hull. Okay. Step five is adding those parts now onto the hull that we've already done, and then step six, adding wheel skirts. Okay, then there's a whole section, step seven, for holes. Putting holes into the top of the hull. I think for mounting tools and other accessories. Step 8, starting to add bits onto the upper hull in two separate parts. One that shows you upside down to the inside parts and then on the outside. It's all pretty straightforward. 9, attaching the upper hull to the lower hull. Pretty simple stuff. Telling you when not to use glue. Step 10, you get to further hull parts, so the more complex things, the little sub-assemblies that need to be built before attaching. Step 11, so it's these bits here. Okay, so it breaks it down nicely there. And there's the gun and everything else going on. Then there's the hatch, that one with the nice detail that I've seen. Goes on there. Step 12. Step 13 assembling the tracks so basically they snap together and there are there we go 61 per track and then it looks like they just snap together on the top and then they should roll round uh, similar to earlier attaching rear parts it says little bits on the back attaching the fenders so they might need to be drilled parts on so just att attaching a few last parts, asking you to cut on rivets and things. Okay, step 16, the muffler assembly, a few parts going together there and certain callouts for it. Step 17 is attaching it and other various small parts, tools and things. All pretty straightforward, so it's split into several sections for the small parts to not confuse things. And then attaching the towing chain. It gives you the order in which to hook it over the different hooks and attachment points, so eventually you get this nice little setup like that, very neat. Step 19, this is all to do with the, the gun from now on, I think. Um, so there's the, the main 47mm gun barrel, the assembly of it, all the tiny parts, the coupler, and turret assembly. There we go. And then attaching the turret and call outs for the two figures, the French and the German. Then attaching the tow chain, the string, turn it to a chain. Various other instructions that we usually expect from Tamiya in a billion different languages. And we're back to the start. So that's the instructions. All the callouts for this kit are on a separate sheet. There are four, so you've got A, the first one, the one I like, Heavy Panzer Battalion, Channel Island, Spring 44. 
the three-tone camo, which is quite nice. Uh, then Heavy Panzer Battalion, Channel Islands, 1942. So, just a, a Panzer Grey scheme. Eastern Front Panzer Battalion, 1941. Similar scheme to the, the second scheme, but with a little snake symbol on it. And then April 1945, three French forces. And the usual Allied drab colour scheme with a silver star, uh, a white star. And inside is just masses and masses and masses of information all about the tank itself, which we'll not go through right now. So that's the call out for the kit. So that's the kit, uh, an inbox review of it. I want to say thank you again for sending it to me, um, to Martin, and yeah, um, I hope you've enjoyed this inbox or it's been useful if you're thinking of getting this kit. It looks quite nice. Well, to me anyway, I'm not a regular armor builder. More into wingy things, but um, yeah, to me it looks quite nice. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay. Well, until next time, thanks for watching, keep modelling, and have fun. Bye.